Welcome to my channel that is created for the young generation of singers and collaborative pianists who decided to devote their lives to pursue careers in opera. In today's episode of the series called A Golden Repertoire for Collaborative Pianists, I'm going to introduce you to the opening of the opera Pagliacci by Leon Cavallo, the famous Il Prologo. So let's dive into it. Usually, when you perform with the singer, you would start about six bars before sip wall, right? But in case that you are the one who is auditioning, I suggest you to start from the very beginning so that you'll have a couple of extra minutes to introduce yourself as a musician and to make an impression without being concerned about singing. Just in case I would still ask the judges whether they do not mind you to start from the top, but let me tell you, if I was a judge, I would certainly want to hear the entrance. Allora andiam, incominciamo. section shape-wise. I would like to think about this opening music as proposta e risposta, which means a proposal and a response. Then there is a cascade of chords coming. Think about making a long eight measure line with it and try not to emphasize every measure, like that. Just keep the direction. I also suggest you to make a little hint of diminuendo that will allow you to taste harmonies better. See yourself without diminuendo. sophisticated in my opinion gives you sort of 3d sense then again our proposta e risposta and then look here you will not find a better word for this brutal climb it says incalzando in Italian, they usually use this word when someone rushes you or kind of pushes you towards something. Show your impatience here. Push, guess, and like a train just go until the very end of this phrase. Here it is. Also, you might have noticed that in the very end of this incalzando moment, I do not play exactly what is written in the vocal score. So this is how it's written. And this is what I play. Working with the full score is very important, guys, because you have no idea how many secrets one might reveal. So here we are, and our first page is perfectly shaped now. Allora andiamo avanti. Continue with contrabassi. It's funny that you barely can hear anything in the orchestra here, so we will need a strict precision while imitating this rhythmical noise.
This little transition makes us wonder what those uncertain harmonies are, what keys are we in? So use your imagination to make it vibrant. I myself imagine small people that mind someone else's business. And that's what created the tragedy at the end, doesn't it? Destroying lives of our heroes or anti-heroes, whoever you think they are. Here it is again. First gossip, Otavima. Second one, Oboe. And the third one, Violin. Gossips transform into a real theme here, which violins play beautifully, a bit slower. Try to make all those three phrases sound like three different instruments. Otavino, oboe, and a bit slower violins. Also show the French horn. Then, guys, who does not know the music that is coming next, right? And for that reason, you'll be tempted to play it molto espressivo, with a great meaning, etc., which is good, but that might cause some overdramatic effect. Don't overthink it. Play it like you never heard it before, with great sadness, but without revealing the crucial importance of this late motif yet. We're gonna nail it later on in Vesti la Giuba. Here it is. <laughs> Now, I'd like to show you a little trick of how to make two identical bars different. The answer seems like lying on a surface. Just play the second one softer and that's it. That's one option, yes. But we can make it more multidimensional and more mysterious by using voices. Here it is, one measure piccolo. First time you're emphasizing the highest voice, but the second one, second time, F sharp, the one that is in the middle. Here it is. You are going to hear D anyway, but making F sharp visible, make it, makes it much more interesting. Continue. This curve is a snake. Evil people, evil thoughts.
much like the way it shaped. It clearly was meant to create this sense of kaleidoscope, contrasting little sections interrupting one another. See how we're transitioning from the gloomy, dark, and mysterious music to something joyful that swallows us into a whirlwind of frantic fun. It's like nothing has happened before and nothing is going to happen in the future. Here's some technical stuff I'm going to show you. Look, the jump from this chord to B is not particularly written in the most friendly way. So, in order to connect it with the B without creating a hole, we are going to play the last 16th in the group of four 16th, a bit softer, or we can reduce the length of it. I do both. I am reducing the length and I play it a bit softer. There is not much we can do here, given the timing, but at least if you can keep it in mind, it'll make a difference. The idea is to create the illusion of playing without stitches and seamlessly, synchronically and fearlessly. To me, it's the right applicatura, first of all. Second, we need to lighten up our thumbs playing those scales. Since our thumbs are the heaviest out of all fingers, the approach should be to take the sound out of the instrument, but not into it. Here are my scale. The idea is, so no one should ever guess that where I turn my thumbs, that's the goal. So if someone noticed, I failed. How you guys are doing so far? Good? Let's continue to the singing part. with Sforzando in the end. Very interesting. If you listen to recordings, you will notice two accents here, on the first note and on the last. So don't play it too beautifully. Also, I know, guys, that there are people who would sing it better than I do, but you stuck with me in this video. Though I'll give up my singing for the next couple of sections, so I do not distract you from the orchestra. In part of what this sounds like Hungarian Rhapsody of Liszt, isn't it? Long, full volume chords, molto legato. observe this change. Oh. This is a very beautiful moment, guys. It reminds me a music box with a beautiful ballerina rotating in a beautiful position. Play very smoothly. I'm talking about new music box, you understand? The one that you can get at the med shop, not the one that moves like that. You see, here comes the hashtag, support the med, at least by ballerina in their shop. It cannot be square in any way. Again, pull or take the sound out of the instrument, not in, into it. Try to avoid this 
tagadagada approach so that it'll sound silky and like a veil, pure and transparent, with the touch of nostalgic, brilliant stardust. For the next three bars, I suggest you to look at partitura, a full score, so you can see that in the orchestra it performs a bit rougher than it's been offered us here in the vocal score. Violins play detaché, so I would like to play it like that. Instead of what's written, which is more elegant, but does not really display how it sounds in reality. This also reminds me a Disney cartoon moment when everything is falling apart, you know, like that. <laughs> so this one would be a right illustration to it. Which leads us to... No! No! Twice! Basically everything that was sang in the previous page got cancelled. Are you kidding me? Just enjoy playing one of the warmest and generous pages ever written in the history of opera. This music embraces you, comforts you, gives you hope and desire to change this world for the best. An interesting thing though here is that this music belongs to the personage who is a true villain and traitor. But it is up to you guys whether you choose to keep it in mind or not. So let's say you felt like your presentation has been lacking of spice and you need to spice it up, compensate it, adding a bit of dynamic, some darkness or even Russian depths here. <laughs> then use this image of Tonio. I personally 
since I was born with this Russian depth. <laughs> and I have it right up to here. I would keep it light and romantic, not anticipating any future tragic events. Couple of important notes here for you guys. Be aware that there will be two challenging long phrases for a singer. Unless your singer is Cheryl Mills, that one would not care. The first one is che le nostre povere gabbane di strioni and the second one considerate perché siamo uomini pianists moderate your musicality here okay and listen to your singer very carefully don't let him run out of breath while enjoying the last beat never delay the first beat here even for a moment let me show you what I mean. Go straight from this A flat to the first beat. Do not, uh, do not delay. You see what I mean? And in the second phrase, the singer usually does portamento. Here it is. Uh, so you have to be with him whether you like it or not later backstage you will tell him your honest opinion what do you really think of him preferably with the heavy russian accent and stone face but while on stage you must always be on his side because that's what high caliber accompanies do okay also as you probably have noticed in a full score which i am imitating violins are playing octava up that way it sounds fuller on the piano switching the mood and going back to reality What was happening? Actually, this cold chord reminds me very much the very end of La Boheme Finale, plays in B minor though. Can we do it, Medico? Verra. It's right before Musetta's prayer. So, here is the end. Guys, if you ask me, I do not bother playing full chords in the end. It's not necessarily in this particular case, in my opinion. I'm talking about no one is gonna hear it anyway. You rather practice your octaves well enough so that you have enough of technical freedom to follow any espresso overdosed conductor, okay? Those would be my important moments that I wanted to share with you about Il Prologo. The moments that personally important for me, Alexandra. There are many more of those moments, of course, I just want to keep these videos in a mini coaching format. So now it is your inner work to discover what steers your imagination, how to bring your personal experience to it. There is a very famous poetry by one of my favorite Russian poets, Anna Akhmatova. It is all about it. I do not exactly like the way it translates in English. I would replace the word trash to dust. It somehow sounds more poetic and better associates with the past, memories, nostalgia, in my opinion. So don't be shy to bring up your images or associ associations, because that's what we artists do. We work with our memories and imagination all our lives. As a collaborative pianist myself, who auditioned a few times 
for the Bolshoi, the Metropolitan Opera Lindemann Young Artist Program, some musical festivals, and got hired. I came up with the conclusion. Everyone who is on a panel, besides the right introduction, obviously, they need and they want to see that you are in love with the music that you play and that you enjoy every second of it. And that's why Il Prologo is such a gem for a musician, in this case for pianists. It's such an opportunity to demonstrate your love to this music, because it's simply impossible to stay indifferent here, as well as showing your virtuosity, musicality, imagination, and of course your dramatic skills. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Also, in your comments, please let me know if there are some excerpts like ensembles, arias, duets that you would be interested to get more ideas about. Thanks so much for being with me today and till soon.